Ejo oil, Bahensa oil belongs to Nigerian people, and we shall do everything possible to defend our oil in Bahensa because God put our oil in Bahensa. Hello, guys, and welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. You know, if you listened attentively to what this Jigawa, this Northerner was saying, that all you in Ejo and Niger Delta areas, you know, uh, um, Bahensa, you know, belongs to. Jigawa people and this is the major problem why majority of these northern leaders do not want to you to return back to regional government now it's not like their people do not want to return back to regional government so it's not like their people don't want to return back to regional government no they are the ones intentionally in trying to deceive their people by telling them that regional government is going to suppress them no 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 why they are doing it is because they know that when we return back to regional government that they, they are going to be held accountable they are going to be held accountable because most of them are now lazy. Not just the Northerners, a lot of leaders across the uh, to seek geopolitical zones we have in the country. They, they no longer, you know, devise new ways of generating revenue in their states. Look at the northern part of the country that is well known for the agricultural progress, produce. The, in fact, during the 1960s, 1963, the north, you know, was the food basket of the nation. They produce all, all kinds of agricultural produce and co. And co. But now, the northern leaders are now lazy. They, they, they don't want to, you know, formulate and you know, create new ways of generating revenue for their states and for, or for the northern region. And that is why I said, let us return back to regional government. So that people can be held accountable. Because why these northerners are running away? Because most of them don't want to be held accountable. They go in Zamfara and they go in some other northern areas and not even being accounted for. Nobody knows what is actually happening to those things. But when we return back to regional government, when these people know that the oil money is no longer coming, that they have to make use of the natural resources they have and account for it and use it to develop their states. That is when you will see that the mineral resources in the northern part of the country will definitely be, will definitely be accountable because only the majority, only the elites in the northern part of the country are the ones enjoying these minerals, embezzling it, sending it out of the country. Look at the other day, they caught a gold miner in Zanfara and, and now he has been collaborating with some government officials and co. And this is what has continuously been happening in the northern part of the country. At the end of the day, they know that they are going to get federal allocation from the oil that is being sold from the southern part of the country. And this is making them to be lazy. Not just the northern leaders have said it here that every other state, every other some majority of the leaders in the Tasi states of the country, they are not they are not lazy. They don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to create new ways. If I ask, what is it that Nigeria has actually can boast that we export? Which what, what can states in the country boast or regions in the country boast that they can export? None. Because at the end of the day, the federal government will share allocation from the oil that is being sold from the Niger Delta regions. Let us return back to regional government. So regions will have full control of their resources, which is called the regional autonomy. If you see that most political uh, uh, regions and uh, every other geopolitical region will pick up, and political leaders will know that if you don't work with what we have in our state, we'll be held accountable and we'll be chased away. That is basically and literally the truth. Well, that is that for that. You know, on another developing story, you know. A lot of things is actually happening in this country. Uh, recently, you know, they have been rumored that good luck Abel Jonathan will actually contest for the 2027 presidential election. A lot of people have been, you know, pressurizing him that he should come back and contest for the election. And it is quite funny, honestly speaking. You could see the uh, banner or the poster that have been circulating. The other time they paired him with uh, one northern again. This time they paired him with Kwankwa. So this time again, you know, you could see that some people are releasing his uh, 2027 presidential campaign uh, pictures and all that. You could see this one. They said, uh, "Good Lord Jonathan, that he is under pressure to contest in 2027." And Delhi Mumud, who is a prominent uh, leader in the country, uh, you know, actually, you know, wrote something about it and published this particular banner of Good Luck Abel Jonathan ahead of 2027 election. But the truth of the matter is that Good Luck Abel Jonathan is a weak man yes you might not actually agree with me but he's actually a weak leader he's he, he might have good intentions in the country he might have one of the best intentions in the country but if you're not strong in the country you will be booted out like the way he was booted out in 2015 and the funny thing about this particular man is that he is not even he doesn't even have the willpower to act, act as, an, as an opposition a man that Bala Metinibu and APC you know embarrassed and did a lot of things campaigned against him you know me, me, apc made sure buari and tinibu made sure that they frustrated him but every now and then good luck Abelo jonathan is in asorok bromancing with the same tinibu and buari that you know frustrated him out of office i've often said it here that opposition is not a crime in democracy as as a, you must be part of an opposition because this is opposition opposition that will help that would the current government accountable this is what a lot of people expected good luck to do immediately he left office but no 
rather he was flow leaking with the same set of people that frustrated him he was going to ask rock mainly with Buari till Buari destroyed and frustrated our economy for one day he did not tell Buari the, the bitter truth that Buari he did not even tell Buari and criticize Buari for all the rascal policies all the illegalities and everything that Buari did on he watched the Buari Buari that made this country so we, he, he might have good intentions but he's not a good leader he's not a bold leader he's not a fear a fearless leader he's not a fierce leader that is why I, I, I am not a, I'm not personally in support of him contesting again, as a matter of fact, for the 2027 presidential election because he can be booted out, he can be destroyed, he, 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 he can be intimidated. Look at how the Northern Kabas actually, you know, chased him away. Tinibu connived with some Northerners and chased him away from office and he couldn't do anything. Now Tinibu have entered into office. Instead of him, as a matter of fact, to stand with the people, look at the end bad uh, governance protests that happened across the Tati states of uh, across the northern most majority majority across the northern part of the country. Good Lord Jonathan went to Asorok and you know passed the vote of confidence on Bolami Tinibu. He did not criticize Tinibu. He saw that people are dying, people can barely feed. He saw that, that, that the country is turning upside down, inflation rate is high. He has never spoken for the masses, he has never spoken against any of the Saska policies that Tinibu did. The same thing he did during Buhari's tenure. You know, he never criticized Buhari, he never advised Buhari. The same thing he's doing. He went to Asor Asorok and passed a vote of confidence on Bolami Tinibu. Not just that, he declared that the end bad governance protest that happened in the country was an insurrection, that it was something bad. Good Lord Jonathan did not even tell Balame Tinibu the way Obasanjo told Balame Tinibu to address the demands of it and bad governance protesters. No, Good Lord Jonathan went there and you know, combined and joined hand with Balame Tinibu, saying that the end bad governance protest was actually an insurrection or, or a plan to you know unseat Balame Tinibu. He has never spoken for the people immediately since he left office. He has never spoken for the people. And what can he, is it the kind of leader that people are trying to campaign for ahead of 27? A man that can easily be intimidated. No, we need a fearless leader, a leader can, that can say yes and stand on his yes without being intimidated. Without being intimidated in any single way, in any single manner. Well, let us read some of the comments of some people, you know, when they saw this uh, banner of uh, the good Lord Jonathan that is under pressure to actually contest for the election. Look at what these people are saying. This person said something. Meanwhile, look at the uh, banner of, uh, look at some of the comments of the, some people. This person said, I don't think this is good. I don't think this is... A good move because I don't like past leader to become new leader. It might be a replica of Buari. This person said that he, he doesn't like the idea of you know former leaders to come back and you know, rule the country again. Remember, Buari ruled during the military regime and came back and destroyed the economy. So this person is saying that he doesn't believe in this idea and he doesn't like the idea of a former leaders coming back to you know rule the nation again. That it is a no no for him. This other person said, I disagree with this one. The man should should generally preserve his legacy and integrity. He's gone past that. This person is saying that the good luck of Jonathan should not even dare think of contesting for 27 presidential election, that he should Kukuma, you know, protect his integrity and whatever thing he calls it and, you know, move on with his life. This other person said he is a good man. I hope he considers it and gets the support. This other person is saying that good luck Jonathan should consider this, you know, pressure and contest for 27 presidential election. You know, a lot of people, I don't know if how they see politics in the country. Before you can become the president of this, of this country, you must be bold enough to deal with Kabaz because a lot of Kabaz are working against this government, are working against this country. So for you as a matter of fact to be at the helm of affairs of everything, you must be bold enough. And that is why Obasanjo, you know, till today remains one of the best presidents to have in the country because he is bold and fearless and he takes decisive decisions. Unlike good luck, Ebelon Jonathan. He allowed himself to be intimidated by Boar and Tinibu. Still yet, he's still romancing with them. And this is not the kind of leader we want. This is not the kind of leader we need in this country because we need a leader that will definitely, you know, put fears in this politician because the way they're embezzling money and destroying our national treasury is something else. We need a leader that will definitely, you know, implement policies that will prevent these criminal politicians from stealing money and not a politician that is weak and that, that will you know, actually allow himself to be intimidated. This other person says something. Gage is the most viable option and the morally right option for 2070. We need good luck again in this country. We need to correct the error of 2015. People are still living in delusion. Yes, good luck, Ebelo Jonathan Steno might actually be better than, in fact, it's better than Buari and Tinibu Steno. But, like I've often said it here, if you don't have a man that is that have the willpower to fight against corruption in the country, you cannot win. You cannot win. You cannot, if, if they will still frustrate you out of office. They will definitely frustrate you out of office, and there is no two ways about that. This other person said something. He said, Nigeria right now is too divided. Ethnic cleavages are 
cleavages are so right now we need a unifying force someone other ethnic groups can trust a moderate i believe good luck jonathan is the app man this person said that since good luck jonathan comes from a minority ethnic group in the country that he suits everything well i don't believe so i don't believe so what nigeria needs is, is practical and total return to regional form of government which is basically and uh, truly the truth i would like you guys to drop your comment share this video and tell me what you think about uh this particular uh proposal that good luck and jonathan will go into in the contest for the 27 presidential election Drop your comments, share this video, and equally subscribe to our channel so you'll be getting important information and updates about political issues and happenings in the country.